Hey there, folks. How are you? Welcome to another Oddity Podcast. My name is Alex Weir. I run a website called The Fractal Journal, which contains fiction stories, nonfiction essays, little analyses, and things that I do. All sorts of content, ranging from what I just mentioned to web comics and music. So be sure to check it out. I post fairly frequently now, and in fact, plan, if possible, to increase my frequency of posting. I, I post nearly every day. I'd like to post more of the kind of content I've been doing. Anyway, now that that little promo is out of the way, let's get to the meat of this video, which is talking about overcoming. Overcoming the barrier to becoming a content creator. Um, on the front page of my website, FraggleJournal.com, I have a little video where it describes what I do. And below it is another video that talks about content creator. I like the word content creator because it's sort of amorphous. Content can be music, it can be a vlog, it can be something written. And it's all made possible by um, technology. And I feel it's very important to exploit technology, to utilize it to its full potential when it becomes available, especially for creative people. But there are barriers for creative people. For instance, for myself, I'm a bit of an antiquarian. Um, if you read some of the essays I've written, I talk a lot about the need to write by hand because the biofeedback, quote unquote, uh, sick of that is very good for promoting um, a careful sort of thinking that in some psychological studies seems to be related to greater information retention and uh, greater creative capacity. I'll try to find those studies and link them in the description below. But the point of it is, is even if you have this conception of a writer as I guess someone with a typewriter or with a pen and a paper in some solitary room somewhere, working away the wee hours of the morning, ignoring their health, and that's your idea of a writer, well, you might want to give that, give that up because that's a romantic notion, and that's fine to have kind of as an ideal of being overcome with a passion to create something, and then you don't put out anything unless it's absolutely good and absolutely marvelous and beautiful, etc. Um, what you'll find over time is that <laughs> what you find absolutely marvelous and beautiful and wonderful will change, and the best way to find out what's really solid is to go ahead and put your best possible foot forward. Go ahead and publish it. And that way you can receive feedback and you can know what it feels like to have put something forward. You, submitting your manuscripts in the case of writing or putting out your music album or whatever. But you see this new technology of the internet where most people are connected to the internet in some way or fashion, even beyond the first world nowadays. Well, uh, you can have this uh, broad sort of reach if you'd like. You can also kind of control and maintain it. Uh, to a level that you're comfortable with. But the point of it is, is you are able to instantly post things, and sometimes some people have even made money on YouTube and other places. But in terms of the creative process, I think it's absolutely vital to constantly be creating and to be creating in different avenues, in fact, in different mediums. That's why in a lot of my videos I talk about the need for cross-disciplinary kind of skill sets. Um, you know, you, you sketch, you doodle, you learn music, and they all overlap. And the best way to maintain and generate um, an interest in doing that is making things and seeing that they actually kind of come out all right. And that when you put them forward, people don't all necessarily attack it or call it crappy. And if they do, it'll help you build a tougher, tougher skin. And this will start a snowball effect, a momentum, to where you're creating more and more and more. And as you're creating more and more and more, you have a greater well of ideas and creative experience to draw from. 
So if you want to get more serious, and I, I, I put it in air quotes, I'll explain in a second why, more serious and submit your manuscript to a big publishing house, to a series of big publishing houses in the hopes that they eventually get published and then you'll be a real writer making real money from a real thing, well, yeah, okay. The point is that you have a lot more steam if you start something like blogging and overcome these five or so factors. I'm thinking there's five. I'm just grouping them together randomly. The first is, hey, you don't want to be making so much content to where you compromise your, uh, your, your value, the value offering you're making. Well, I think the best way to compromise the value you make is to generate absolutely no value at all. To hide in a corner believing that you're going to create something perfect and that all the people that are putting stuff out there are just wankers that uh, need to friggin' work harder. Hey, they're at least working. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's no such thing as perfect. There just isn't. The second uh, point of uh, contention for a lot of people is, oh, it's, it's too easy. There's that whole association of effort, right? So the harder it is, that's why people are always like, oh, well, you were published by a random house or whatever. It's difficult. Now, is it difficult in the sense that only good writers make it there? I think that's a, a subjective judgment. I think there is something to be said of the whittling process of, hey, the, the, the people that get published generally will probably tend to have something to offer or have had an editor that made them have something to offer. But the point remains that a lot of it is also shaped by market forces and the number of things that people have reviewed, etc. So that whole difficulty assuring a higher value, difficulty of creation or publishing, assuring a higher value doesn't necessarily hold water. And, you know, it's really not so terribly difficult to work out daily, but it has incredible results in terms of overall feelings of well-being, increased vitality and health, staving off diseases. These are all proven things, and it's not really so very difficult. So you don't have to make these massive Herculean wee hours of the morning writing on parchment efforts. You just have to do something consistently and build that well of ideas, like I said. Let me think of a third here. Well, a, a, a third is, oh, well, if I put out my content, it's just going to get drowned in this oversaturated market of stuff. Oh, yeah, tough. That's the reality of the world we're living in. That was the reality of our fathers and of our grandfathers. It was just different because it had to do with actual pen and ink publications and pamphlets and things off a printing press. Sure, you can say, well, now it's even worse because there's so many people posting so many things. Right. But um, I've, I subscribe to a large number of people and I'm able to follow them throughout the week. Pretty much every one of them, there's at least like 10 or 20 different people and stay pretty consistently up to date with what they're posting and doing, and it all kind of converges in a similar interest matter. Of course, I try not to stay in a kind of an echo chamber. I, I meander out of that, but the point of it is, is that there are people looking for interesting things, and if you're making something, it's probably going to be interesting to somebody, and they will find it despite the saturation, because whatever big voice you like, or, or and that's really influential out there, people, despite the value that that old voice offers, We'll get tired of it and look for something new, you know? There's that whole also thirst for authenticity, that hipstery authenticity thirst. It makes it possible for smaller people in the tiny office to at least reach somebody, right? So there we go. There's some hope for that. Now, I'm trying to reach for five reasons here, or five things that must be overcome in order to post more consistently. Um, so num number four, I believe would be something to defect up. Oh, I don't want to give up my privacy, my identity, etc. Okay, fine. You don't have to do what I'm doing. You don't have to show your face or use your name. It just, it depends on what you want to reveal. 
and you can blog perfectly anonymously, etc. It's it's absolutely doable. I mean, people in the past used pen names anyway for political reasons, etc. So, you know, it is what it is. And if you're the kind of person that doesn't like feedback, well, you need to come overcome that because both negative and positive feedback, whether it's to your person, like your acknowledged person, or to an anonymous version of you, will help you develop. It's it's so necessary because you're going to enjoy life a lot more if you overcome that little bit of a pain, discomfort threshold. It's really a trite, raw statement, but it needs to be made. And uh, fifth, you don't have the time. You work a full-time job, you've got kids or something, you're just one of those people. And that's perfectly fine, but you, you do you do have time. You have at least 30 minutes to an hour at some point during the week. There's probably more that you have to yourself, or you can make your significant other understand that, hey, I want to pursue this project because XYZ reason and it's potentially a moneymaker, and it'll expand my network and my reach, etc. Yeah, you should find the time. There's, um, look, in, in the world that we live in today of washing machines and dishwashers and the grocery store is right there and we can drive everywhere and we can instantly check emails and communicate with each other, there's ways to find time. And if you are passionate about being creative, find the time. So those are the five. Now, why did I put in um, air quotes real? Because, look, it's that difficulty threshold again. It doesn't feel real because it's not, you're not a published author or you're not a musician on a record label. Well, is what you wrote something that you would enjoy reading? Is what you made something you would enjoy listening to? And, and okay, well, I only enjoy that because I made it and then there's that whole I did it, so therefore it's like my taste and my thing's right. But even if it's your taste and your things and that whole element of you did it, therefore you're prone to liking it plays into it, you can assess objectively whether or not your story has, you know, coherency, whether it uses uh, imagery in a rich but understandable way, whether there's a, a good balanced economy of words or in your music if you use the circle of fifths effectively and the like. And whether or not your lyrics match the mood of what you've done or are inventive in a way that might not necessarily match the mood. But you know what I'm talking about. And you can gauge that. And that's why, even if it's really easy to put your stuff on, say, a blog, which everyone's like, oh, well, that's just a blog. Well, yeah, but heck, you can probably think Friedrich Nietzsche, whatever you think of him, did make some insightful points and have some pretty good capacity for language. But in a sense, the more I read his stuff, it's like he was an 1800s blogger. And what's a blogger but a writer who chooses to, at times, submit his work for the evaluation and enjoyment of the public for free? And what's, uh, what's ignoble or silly about that? Okay? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's real work. If it actually is coherent and you can tell that it has at least some value in your own eyes, eventually someone will find it and also like it. And there we go. And so you brought yourself the experience of creating something, of getting better at creating something, and of submitting it for feedback. And that is why are the things you should overcome and why you should overcome them in terms of uh, being creative. This has been, I think, the 13th installment of the IOD podcast. Thanks so much for joining me. Again, please visit www.fractaljournal.com. Consider donating to the Patreon if you like what you've seen here. Uh, even if you don't, I'm going to continue making these videos because of all of the reasons I've mentioned beforehand. So, see ya.